Hey guys, back on the little path receiver from the early 1930s, Model R. The uh, loudspeaker itself is uh, compromised. Uh, probably not a big deal because it would not be a uh, significant player anyway in my collection. But uh, anyway, I thought it'd be fun to kind of take this thing apart and uh, tear it down and reproduce a, a new cone maybe even a voice coil if needed i've already started releasing the uh, gasket here just uh, going around it with a uh, razor and i've got it loose and get the uh, gasket out of the way again i'm kind of torn on the uh, spider itself I've had some uh, folks respond that it looks like it's warped. Others said probably from the uh, factory this way. So this speaker should come apart, just these two fasteners. That also holds the uh, spider in place, and that should allow me to release the uh, field coil also. And then pull the uh, speaker cone out attached to the uh, voice coil and spider so we can look at that closer okay there's the uh, center pole piece and there's the field coil I wish every uh, speaker I had uh, worked on would be that symbol you can see it's keyed for alignment purposes a lot of play in here along the uh, center pole piece. One thing you will notice is that my spider is still attached, but uh, you may or may not be able to see this on camera. Let me uh, get some additional lighting turned on. I'll try to zoom in on this, but it looks like the uh, voice coil, at least the winding itself, is maybe a turn or two um, just above the uh, frame right here for reference. And there's a look at the uh, voice coil itself. I was thinking the uh, fasteners went all the way through and held the uh, spider in place as well, but looks like I've got some fasteners here that do that. Okay, and there's the uh, second fastener that holds the uh, spider in place. This cone is uh, pretty much dry rotted. I usually would just soak this in a little lacquer thinner around the uh, edge to loosen that up. Or some acetone. Maybe even alcohol. Not really a, a very good job of preserving the uh, cone, at least the uh, surround or the parameter around the surround itself. You can look too at the uh, gap that you have to uh, work with here. You can see how brittle this is. Makes sense to be back from the uh, 1930 period. All right, there we go. And there's a look at the uh, spider closer and what's left of the old uh, paper cone. I think that is warped the more I look at it on each side. Probably uh, moisture at some point in time. And here's a look at the uh, voice coil for reference. At 200 uh, kilohertz. Inductance right at 88 micro henrys and you can see the DCR of uh, 3.12 ohms. Let me go ahead and get the uh, frame cleaned up. I will just put some uh, lacquer thinner down and uh, just lay this in it for a bit and uh, just loosen up the uh, what's left of the glue and the cardboard and uh, get the frame cleaned up. And another thing to take note of, you can see the uh, rust that's formed on the iron piece or the uh, center pole piece as well. So in addition 
to the uh, diameter here of the fuel coil. Boy, this thing's just floating around in there. You've got all this build up as well on the uh, center old piece of iron here as well. And for reference, measure this a couple different times. Make sure I've got a, a flat substrate. But I'm going to look at the uh, distance from the uh, floor back to the uh, cone in this area as inverted. You may be able to pick this up on camera, but you can see the uh, diameter of the uh, loudspeaker. Of course, I did have some uh, degrading of that. But this thing was uh, just holding on to the uh, frame itself. So at 110, really from the edge of the frame to the inner edge of the frame. So somewhere around 120 millimeters would be a good size, 120, 122. Again, you can see how brittle the old cone is to be 80 plus years old. And definitely a better look at the uh, spider now. And that just broke from that side. Just a bit over two millimeters there between the uh, spider and the uh, top of the uh, voice coil. Okay, I let the center pole piece there soak in the citric acid and then uh, cleaned it up. Got rid of all the uh, rust and grime on it. Then again, there's the uh, cone I showed it earlier that I've built. And uh, here's the uh, former or bobbin for the uh, new fuel coil. Let the epoxy uh, set up overnight. Now I just need to wind a, a new fuel coil. I think the problem with the old fuel coil, or one thing to uh, take note of, the uh, wire gauge is uh, very small. I'm guessing somewhere in the uh, 38 to 40 AWG. And uh, unfortunately, um, if you look at uh, current or mils per amp, it's really undersized. So I think I'm gonna go back with uh, 35 AWG and uh, just wind as much as I can on the uh, new bobbin and just add a, a resistor. It will change the electrical properties of the center pole piece that goes through here. Uh, one thing I did notice about this particular uh, fill coil, the uh, diameter of the fill coil uh, separated about an eighth of an inch or so. From the center pole piece, I made this one tighter. So hopefully I can make up a little ground by keeping the windings closer to the center pole piece, even though I'll probably have fewer windings using a larger uh, AWG wire that would better handle the uh, 40 milliamps of current, roughly 39 to 40. I just finished winding the uh, new fill coil on the bobbin that I showed using 35 AWG. Again, I will not get the same uh, resistance as the old fill coil. An undersized uh, AWG wire was used, um, probably in the neighborhood of 38 to 40 AWG, to be able to uh, get 2,500 ohms. So I'll add a resistor in series with this and uh, hopefully we can still get enough uh, magnetic energy back to the center pole piece to uh, make the uh, loudspeaker operate. Just a dry fit with the uh, reproduced uh, voice coil, spider cones around 
and the bobbin for the fill coil in place. Again, just laying here on the speaker frame and the magnitude phase, which is a close representation to the reflected impedance back at one kilohertz. You can see it's uh, 6157, 6160 ohms. That's through the transformer. Okay guys, I've got the loudspeaker hooked up. I'm just going directly to the uh, voice coil and my DC current across the uh, fuel coil is uh, right at 40 milliamps. That's where the radio was playing originally, so I think that's uh, about correct for that. Not too bad considering, you know, I built the uh, new voice coil as well. But for an old AM radio, I think this will uh, suffice. Thanks for watching.